Hello, this is Defunct City, and today I'm going to tell you how the brutal massacre of 24-year-old graduate student Anastasia Yashenko shocked not only the northern capital, but all of Russia. Do not forget to subscribe to our channel. We continue. The girl died at the hands of her teacher and common-law husband, 63-year-old historian Oleg Sokolov, a man well-known in the academic world. The man shot Anastasia butchered her body and dumped her remains into the Moika River. All what was happening was caught on camera from the street. Oleg Sokolov was born in 1956 in Leningrad. In 1979, he graduated from Leningrad Polytechnic Institute with a degree in physics engineering and then entered Evening Department of History Department of Moscow State University. Sokolov received his degree with honor and in 1990 successfully defended his dissertation. He was engaged in French history, and his love to Napoleon was called fanatical by his relatives, and he liked to go out in public just in the image of Bonaparte. As a child, his parents loved to read him books about Napoleon. Sokolov's scientific merits were appreciated not only in Russia, but also in Europe. In 2003, the President of France even awarded him the Legion of Honor. In addition, he was invited to be a professor at the École des Hotsetudes Practics at the Sorbonne. True, there are several episodes in Sokolov's biography that go against his resume of a true St. Petersburg intellectual. For example, he had a falling out with fellow publicist Yevgeny Ponosenkov. M. Sokolov, as his opponent stated, used extracts from his works in his book and was accused of plagiarism. This was the reason for the trial. One could turn a blind eye to this, since such disputes are not uncommon in the scientific community. But Ponosinkov argues that it's not just about plagiarism. He allegedly tried to warn people that Sokolov is dangerous to society. And as it turned out, these words were not empty words. The tragedy took place on November 7th, but we didn't learn about it until two days later. And that, in fact, was thanks to chance. Early in the morning of November 9th, the cab driver noticed an old man floundering in the river Moika. The injured man was pulled out of the river and handed over to the doctors. Along with him, a backpack was pulled out of the water, the contents of which shocked the police. It turned out that on the embankment, the man brought a woman's hands and a traumatic gun. It was not difficult to identify the man who was rescued. He turned out to be 63 years old Dosen Oleg Sokolov. In the apartment of the historian found the mutilated body of his graduate student and lover Anastasia Yashenko. They often appeared together at reconstructions and costume balls. They wrote several scientific papers. Sokolov assessed the situation and decided to confess what he had done. He said that he had quarreled with his young mistress and allegedly shot her in a state of affect. At the same time, the scientist did not panic. He hid the girl's body in one of the rooms and, as if nothing had happened, he received guests who, by the way, did not notice anything unusual. Sokolov decided to get rid of the body the classic way of sewing it up into pieces and drowning it in the river. He bought a saw and set to work. But in the process he periodically became dizzy. So he had a lot to do with the bottle. The docent managed to send part of Anastasia's remains to the bottom, but the backpack with his hands did not want to sink in any way. As a result, Sokolov, already quite intoxicated, fell into the water himself. At the time of Sokolov's arrest, there were two versions of the conflict. The first was a conflict with Sokolov's daughters from a previous marriage, and the second, an elderly teacher was jealous of his young beloved to her peers. From the text of the statement, Sokolov grabbed my hands from behind and began tying me with a rope, which I understood he had prepared in advance. I started resisting and asked him to explain what was going on. Sokolov started to raise his hand on me, after which he tied me to a chair. I was completely helpless and unable to put up any resistance. Sokolov went out into the next room, while I remained tied to a chair in the hallway from the room. He came back with an iron and plugged it into the socket in front of me. When the iron came on, he held it up to my face, so I could feel the heat coming from it, and he threatened to disfigure me for life. 
After that he began to methodically abuse me, hitting me in the face, the head, hitting me in the chest and stomach. After he stopped all my pleas to stop and come to my senses, he only got worse and said he was going to take my life and bury my body at a nearby construction site where I was unlikely to be found. No criminal case was brought against the docent. Moreover, he retained his position in the department, and the story was buried until 2018, when the victim decided to tell the media about it. Well then, no action was taken. Although, according to the history department, that unacceptable behavior of the teacher was not a secret to anyone. Maxim, the historian, said that all the girls of the faculty were aware of his inappropriate behavior and usually sent him harshly in the appropriate direction. But every rule has exceptions, and someone would become his mistress. And he was a jealous and aggressive man. And if any girl got involved with him, she found herself in a very unpleasant situation from which it was not so easy to get out, because this man tried to keep his chosen one by any means. Now there is a petition on the internet demanding that the leadership of the university, which turned a blind eye to the numerous complaints, be brought to justice. The St. Petersburg tragedy has caused a storm of indignation in the social networks and the media. Few people dared to stand up in defense of the scholar. Most of the historian's former and current students, as well as his colleagues, have spoken out about the unacceptability of his behavior. It was his opponent, the historian Yevgeny Ponosenkov, who was quite expected to be the first to speak out. A year ago on the YouTube channel, I posted a statement that Oleg will reprisal with the student. I said it bluntly. The university, as well as the police, ignored my messages. He recalled that Sokolov had recently lost to him in court and could not cope with the stress, and he decided to take out his anger on his mistress. In addition, he hinted that not everything is clear about the death of the scientist's first wife. On December 25, 2020, the 64-year-old historian and one of the best experts on the history of France during the Napoleonic era was found guilty of brutally killing the girl. The hall could barely seat everyone. They even made an exception for the parents of Anastasia Yeshenko and put them on the seats of the jury. The state prosecution asked for 15 years of imprisonment. Sokolov's defenders almost halved it. And as a result, Oleg Sokolov was sentenced to 12.5 years in a strict regime penal colony. Taking into account the time already spent in the detention center, the presence of elderly parents, and the merits of historical science. See you on the defunct city soon.